Good evening and welcome. You're watching the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. Is the opposition unfairly targeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi by calling him a bad omen who made the Indian team lose the World Cup finals with his presence? Is it even right for senior opposition leaders like Rahul Gandhi to be encouraging superstitious thinking amongst India's citizens? That's my top focus on the news track. <laughs> Epic meltdown over Modi team meet. You have to go to the game. Viral moment triggers opposition. Rahul Gandhi hurls bad luck jibe. <laughs> TMC Neta and former cricketer calls it a violation. Prime Minister of this country or a labourer of this country are not above the law. Nobody apart from the players or the support staff can go in and that too with a camera. Sports becomes fair game for politics. That is our top focus on news track. Cricket has become fair game this election season. Prime Minister Modi's viral video of meeting the Indian cricket team after their World Cup loss has triggered the opposition. Rahul Gandhi today attacked the Prime Minister, calling him a bad omen. The BJP hit back hard, saying it's Rahul Gandhi who's the real panauti for India's opposition and for the Congress party. Here's our lead story tonight. <laughs> the Prime Minister motivating Team India after their loss in the World Cup Finals on Sunday. <laughs> the new video of the Prime Minister's interaction with the men in blue has triggered a political storm. Congress MP Rahul Gandhi blamed the Prime Minister for India's loss. In every language, before Narendra Modi came, he said that I am OBC. Do you remember? Do you remember? Panoti, Panoti. Panoti. If you win our girls, you win the World Cup. They win Panoti. They win the Panoti. The Congress has called the video a choreographed consolation by the master of drama in India. You were told to raise your hands, but you were not raise your hands. When the World Cup series started, you should have to sit with them. You should have to say their best of luck. You should have to sit with them. 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 Shiv Sena UBT MP Priyanka Chaturvedi has also hit out, saying that the players looked uncomfortable with the PM. <laughs> Former cricketer and TMC leader, who was also a part of the 1983 World Cup winning team, slammed the PM for entering the players' dressing room. So this is some place that should not be entered. And you, like I've heard the BJP guys saying, oh, he's the Prime Minister, he can go anywhere. Fair enough. But the Prime Minister of this country or a labourer of this country are not above the law. Once the laws are laid down by the ICC after the match-fixing issue, that nobody apart from the players or the support staff can go in. And that too with the camera. The BJP says the interaction is an example of the Prime Minister's leadership, who stood by the team when the chips are down. He's actually continuing the Congress tradition of calling all abusive names of the Prime Minister. We need to see what is the approach Congress takes, whether it is sports or whether it, in their hatred for PM. This is another classic example. As far as sportsmen are concerned, whether it's the Asian game, the Commonwealth game, India has done spectacularly well because of the kind of support that 
uh, has been provided by the government of India. True leader is somebody who stands by the team when the chips are down, and that's exactly what the Prime Minister uh, takes. He deserves great kudos for it. Panoti, panoti. In this politically challenged election season, even sports has become fair game. Bureau Report, India Today. Is the Indian opposition targeting the Prime Minister unfairly when they call him a bad omen because he went and watched the match in India lost? Why is Rahul Gandhi pushing this superstition narrative, especially somebody who's educated and claims to be a man of the modern world? Is this not completely the wrong message to be putting out? Uh, joining us to debate this on the news track, senior Congress leader Gaurav Gogai and squaring off against him, senior BJP leader Amit Malvi. I want to go across to Gaurav Gogai first. You know the choice of word, the language, unparliamentary, not tasteful. Secondly, the idea that somebody's presence or absence can be an omen in a match. Now, you know, you play some sports yourself. You were telling me you play tennis. Now, your performance depends on how you play. The Prime Minister's presence or absence, Gaurav Gogoi, has very little to do with the performance of the Indian team. So, why would Rahul Gandhi make such an uncharitable, unparliamentary, uncalled for attack? Let's start with Gaurav Gogoi. Uh, Rahul, first of all, let me take this opportunity to congratulate the men in blue for their fantastic performance and we stand with them whenever they win and whenever they lose. Uh, secondly, I think Rahul Gandhi spoke about far more important issues, but it is the BJP in its obvious attempt to obfuscate and divert. What Rahulji mentioned in his long speech in Rajasthan was about the need for a caste census, was about crony capitalism, was about the welfare schemes for the below the poverty line population. And of, of the many things that the BJP chose to react to, they don't have a positive vision for Rajasthan. They seem to be repeating what the Congress is already doing. So in order to only obfuscate, they've chosen to comment on Rahul Gandhi's observation on a trend which has been very viral. The word Ponoti has been trending on social media for the past three, four days. So Rahul Gandhi has been only echoing what the people of India have been saying. Now it just shows that the BJP are desperate and they should actually stop whining. The Prime Minister himself has said far more worse things uh, in this election. The BJP have done far more worse things in this Rajasthan elections. So I do think that it is nothing but an attempt of the BJP to uh, divert from the real issues that Rahul Gandhi is raising in Rajasthan. Okay, let, let Amit Malviya respond. One, that this hashtag had been trending since after the World Cup final, so it's not as if Rahul Gandhi started it. The BJP too, in the heat and dust of the campaign, says all kinds of unparliamentary, uncharacteristic uh, things and therefore, you can't really blame Rahul Gandhi for paying back in the same coin or same language. This is election season, you take some and you hit some. Rahul, I pity the Congress spokespeople because they have to come and defend Rahul Gandhi for what he has said. Also, they have to explain again and again what Rahul Gandhi meant, which are the other things that he spoke about, and why we should look at those things and not what has been said in the context of Prime Minister and the World Cup final. Now, if your leader is so bad in communication, he's your problem. Please do not thirst him on India. Secondly, even if this hashtag was trending, let's be clear that the people behind this hashtag happened to be from the opposition. It was as if Indian team's performance or their run in the tournament was not a matter of debate, but the Prime Minister's presence on the field was. We forget that this is the World Cup. India is hosting the tournament and the Prime Minister of the country is well within his right to be there at the venue to give away the trophy to the winner, which is what he did when he met the Australian team, congratulated them, met every member of the Australian team and ensured that the team felt like winners. He also had a responsibility to go across to the Indian national team and meet the players who were rightly dejected at having had such a brilliant run in the tournament but collapsing in the last game. He did all of that. 
But look at what the Congress is focusing on, and this has come from none other than Rahul Gandhi, who actually used the public platform to echo what is being said on social media. Now, my idea of leadership is that you say and you do the right things, like the Prime Minister went and met the team when they were down and out, without worrying about what the world might say, or how his actions may be perceived because he thought it was the right thing to do to meet those young boys and tell them that listen you've done a great job we are proud of you as a country and it happens I mean you win some and you lose some but don't lose heart what does Rahul Gandhi do on the other hand a, a hashtag that is tending which is definitely not in good taste he adds his voice to it so if you are going to be a run-of-the-mill leader who is okay. going to catch on a trend, however flimsy or uh, unparliamentary it may be, then it doesn't reflect well on you. And Rahul Let Gandhi, Gaurav, Gaurav Gogai respond to this, because media, if that hashtag was trending, being a troll. if the hashtag was trending, it was because the opposition was doing it. Surely Amit Malviya and his BJP army wasn't pushing this trend. It was being done by the opposition army. Secondly, why should Rahul Gandhi reduce himself to a troll? Thirdly, take for a moment the fact that the Prime Minister left the Narendra Modi Stadium without meeting the team. Opposition would have said the opposite. They would have said, here's a leader who goes away just because the boy is lost. He doesn't want to be associated with failure. He went away. He didn't even have the courtesy to meet the team. The fact that he's meeting the team shows he cares and he's wanting to stand by them like he stood by the scientists of ISRO when Chandrayaan 1 failed. Rahul, first of all, it is fine to paraphrase what Amit said, but then to go on to assume what the opposition would do if Narendra Modi ji did not meet the team is a bit too much. Secondly, I also pity the BJP for their selective amnesia because they seem to forget what the Prime Minister has said in this election. The Prime Minister has appealed to people of India to press on the symbol of lotus so that they could award a death sentence. That's the language that the Prime Minister is speaking of. The, I, I pity the selective amnesia of the BJP when they send to Rajasthan a BJP MP who openly as, uh, abused inside the parliament a Muslim MP from Uttar Pradesh and he is their star campaigner. I pity the BJP for their selective amnesia when they've given a ticket to an MLA who has, been, uh, who has assaulted a Dalit engineer so badly that he's been in Rajasthan hospital for the past two years. And when it comes to the Prime Minister meeting the teams of both Australia and India, I also wish that the Prime Minister had the time to go to Manipur to meet the people, the victims there. I also wish that the Prime Minister had the time to go to Uttarakhand. So obviously when it talks about, Amit talks about leadership setting an example, Fine. Okay. The Prime Let Amit Malviya respond to the point about Manipur. It's been Indian so many months team, the Prime Minister he hasn't been Manipur, there. He was absent in Uttarakhand. And even the tunnel rescue now in its 10th day, the Prime Minister not finding time to go to Manipur or to Uttarakhand, going to the more glamorous cricket finals. Amit Malviya. Rahul, do you really think that Manipur, which was on boil for over two years when the Congress was in power, would have been addressed in quick time had the central government not been seized of the matter. You had the Home Minister make a very emphatic and a detailed statement on the floor of the House. The Congress insisting repeatedly that the Prime Minister should intervene is nothing but politics. In Uttarakhand, the rescue operation is going on, the centre is monitoring it and we've had a big breakthrough right today as we speak. You think it would have happened without the intervention of the central government? So the opposition wants to drag in the prime minister because it is convenient politics for them. But let me come to the word panoti and why Rahul Gandhi chose to reduce himself to a troll. The fact is that this is a personal angst that Rahul Gandhi and the Gandhi family has against Prime Minister Modi. In okay. the last 10 years, Mr. Modi has reduced the Gandhi family to the fringes. Rahul Gandhi had to leave Amethi and go and seek himself a safe seat in Wayanad, Kerala. The Congress party has been reduced to a level where they are not even entitled to have a leader of opposition in the assembly. Now, if that is what Rahul Gandhi and his party have been reduced to by the Prime Minister, I can quite understand why he called Prime Minister a bad omen because he is definitely a bad omen for the Gandhis and the Congress party. Okay. Imagine Rahul Gandhi from the time he must have stepped into this world 
एवरीबडी फ्रॉम इज डोमेस्टिक हेल्प टू द ड्राइवर टू द सिक्योरिटी गार्ड वुड हैव टोल्ड हिम कि ये साहब प्रधानमंत्री बनेंगे और आज राहुल गांधी का ये हाल कर दिया है नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने कि वो एक सीट जीतने के लिए देश के कोने कोने में भटक रहे हैं No, okay. स्वाभाविक बात so, है कि ऐसे आदमी को प्रधानमंत्री पनौती ही लगेंगे लेकिन okay. जैसे आपके कर्म है वैसे ही परिणाम है But if you reduce the debate to name calling, then I want to remind what Sonia Gandhi started in 2007 when she called Prime Minister Modi "maut ka saudagar," and today the Congress is on death bed. They should never okay. forget it. Do not name call a man who's been elected twice the prime minister of this country with a massive majority, a man from humble origins, from backward caste, who's today the most popular leader not just in the country in the world. If you don't learn your lessons, the people of this country will teach you one again in 2024 and these five elections where you'll be routed. I want to go to Kirti Azad, former cricketer, opposition leader, joining us now. He's put out a tweet saying the dressing room is the sanctum sanctorum no, of any I should, treat. I do. I should get the right. Uh, can I just go across to Kirti? Bye. Okay, Gaurav, I'm coming back to you in a moment. Uh, I want to go across to Kirti Azad, and I'll come back to you soon after. You're saying that the PM should have gone and met the team outside the dressing room in the private visitors area. You're saying this. You claim as a spokesperson, not as a politician. But you know this has happened so often. Uh, the fact that. Politicians have, in fact, gone and met teams. I have these images of Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, meeting the rejected French team soon after the World Cup finals, where they lost. So this is not something that's happened for the first time. It's happened in the past. So why have you taken this position, Kirti Azad? Uh, I'm uh, speaking as a sportsman because I'm a sportsman at heart and a politician by choice. The ICC laid down the rules way back. Somewhere around mid 2000, this is after I had raised the issue of match fixing uh, in 99, 2000 at Parliament, and after that the IPL had started and a few cases had come up. Rules were laid down that only players and the support staff can go into the dressing room or the outside area where people sit, where the players sit. Nobody else can go there. Later on, even the owners of the IPL teams were allowed, but nobody else. There is nothing wrong for the for the prime minister to go and uh, meet the team and console them. It's a very good thing, but then that place is a sanctum sanctorium, and if you're going to console the team, why do you have to carry a camera with you? You're not allowed to carry a camera. If you go to a prime minister's office or to his residence, even your mobile phones are kept outside, and then you go and meet him. Here, there are rules of the game. The ICC has laid down the rules. And we had Jay Shah, who was the secretary of the BCCI, who happens to be the son of the honourable uh, Home Minister of India, who is in turn the cabinet minister in Mr. Modi's cabinet. I am talking uh, completely as a sports person. In our dressing room, people are roaming naked. Some are crying. Some may be laughing. There might be fight. There may be arguments going on. That is one place that you can't go to, and it has been restricted by the ICC. It doesn't mean because if you are the prime minister, whether you are a prime minister or a normal labourer of this country, the laws are the same for each and every one. If he had to meet, nothing wrong about it. But he should have gone into the visitors' room, going in there with cameras and showing it to the people, and new people showing it around and saying that is consoling. Very good, but not where it is not allowed, which is a sacred site place and which is okay. a sanctum. Okay. So let go, let Amit Malviya respond. Why go with cameras? Why not go to the visitors' room? ICC rules do not allow politicians and outsiders into the dressing room. This is a violation of ICC rules. Claims Anybody, Kirti Azad. even the family members are not allowed. Okay, Amit Malviya. Rahul, we have to understand why these rules were formed in the first place. It was to preclude the players from any opportunity to indulge in conversations which could lead to match fixing. That was the genesis of this rule, and you have yourself given examples of several. Yeah. prime ministers and heads of the states who have walked into stadiums and uh, have been with the players after these big tournaments in this particular case also the world cup tournament was over the match was done the results were out the winner was felicitated and that is when the prime minister went and met the players 
I frankly haven't been to Ahmedabad Stadium and I don't know whether it was the dressing room or it was the lounge outside the dressing room. That is for the BCCI to clarify. But I see nothing wrong in the Prime Minister going, meeting the team and consoling them. As far as the cameras are concerned, look, politicians and public figures live in the eye of uh, public glare all the time. The cameras follow this. them. He's the prime minister of the country. Every minute of his movement is scheduled, is recorded. The opposition's problem is that had the, had the Indian team won the World Cup, they would have said, oh, look, this happened in 1983 when Indira Gandhi was the prime minister. It happened in 2011 when Manmohan Singh was the prime minister. So what if it happened if, when Prime Minister Modi is in office? Now that the Indian team has lost, they are claiming that it happened because of him. I want to tell them that 19th November, the day final was played, also happened to be Indira Gandhi's birth anniversary. By that extension, would the Congress now claim that Indira Gandhi was Panauti? Is that okay. what they want to do? Gaurav, Gaurav Gogai, if you too? speak to any that of the, the players who are, who are lastly, in that room. And yes. lastly, Rahul. Come quickly. Rahul, I want to tell the opposition, 1983, India won World Cup. Indira Gandhi was the Prime Minister. She did not come back. 2011, Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister. He didn't come back in 2011. If the reverse has happened, you can be sure that Prime Minister Modi is coming back in 2024. Good luck to the opposition in that case. If you ask any of the players, Gaurav Gogai, most would say that they enjoyed meeting the Prime Minister, that uh, they felt that their spirits were raised because they met the Prime Minister and that he stood with them despite the defeat. So the players would actually be thinking of this quite differently from the manner in which the opposition has taken this position. Gaurav Gogoi. Uh, Rahul, I respect the sentiment of the Indian cricket team and I respect the wisdom of the Indian people. And I thank the people of India for teaching me a new word in Hindi, Panoti. For the last two, three days, it was trending on social media. Everybody was talking about it. Even in my home state, we were not talking about uh, using the Hindi word Panoti, but people in Assam also and across India are saying the same, same thing, the same trend. So I thank the people of India and I respect their sentiment. Rahul Gandhi ji observed and respected the wisdom of the people of India. And it's, it's quite funny for me uh, to see the chief of the BJP troll army compare Rahul Gandhi to a troll. The BJP and its entire troll machinery for the past few years have tried so hard and I pity them because the people of India are seeing that today Rahul Gandhi ji offers a message of peace, hope and solidarity. And on the other hand, it is the Prime Minister who is using unparliamentary words, who is supporting unparliamentary leaders, who stayed mum on Bridge Bhushan Singh. He has time to meet Indian wrestlers and Indian sportspersons. But when Indian wrestlers were calling out to the Prime Minister, support, asking for his support, begging for his support in a case of sexual harassment, then the Prime Minister chose to stay mum. The Prime Minister chose to ignore the sportspersons from Manipur who were asking for peace. The Prime Minister is basically, the BJP ecosystem knows that it's going to do very poorly, despite the hubris of my BJP counterpart, it's going to do very poorly in these state elections. And this is nothing but an attempt to obfuscate from what is an obvious result that the BJP is going to okay. lose in no, all So the we'll deal with the exit polls the next, uh, on the 30th elections. of November. Our viewers and our entire team super excited about that. But Kirti Azad, you said you spoke as a cricketer and therefore let me ask you as a sports person, wouldn't it be better for a sports person to meet the team if you were a Kohli or a Sharma or Mohammad Shami or anybody else? The fact that the leader of your country came to meet you despite being defeated rather than just going away. And if he'd just gone away without meeting the players, then I thought, okay, because we lost, we didn't even think we were worth meeting. But despite losing the fact that he came and met them, spent some time from the reactions that we've seen on social media, from the likes of Mohammad Shami, from the likes of Ravinder Jadeja, they seem quite touched by the fact that the Prime Minister spent time with them and tried to encourage them, despite the dejection of the loss. I mean, who's saying so that he shouldn't have met? But why would he meet in the dressing room, which is sacrosanct, which is, uh, uh, which is obviously... Uh, a sanctum sanctorium for players where people are 
discussing doing postmortems after games. Now, I just heard Amit Malviya ji is saying that it was because of match fixing. If that is so, why are the family members not allowed? Why can't uh, the World Cup winner Kapil Dev or uh, MS Dhoni go in there or a Sachin Tendulkar go into a dressing room? Because it's a strict no, no. It's a very private place. I can't come to your house and straight away walk into your bedroom. Can I? No, I can't. It's a place the rules have been laid down. Secondly, we were talking about uh, the that people have been going to FIFA and football uh, in two dressing rooms. ICC and FIFA rules are different. Now, coming to uh, uh, the players not saying no, I mean, come on, we all know who Jay Shah is. I'll have to give one political answer here. Everybody knows who Jay Shah is and everybody wants to be in the team. They don't want to be dropped from the next series. Coming to Panauti, well, Panauti is a word that I have seen on social media and I, because I am on social media and follow it a lot, it is after the Chandrayaan failure. This Panauti word, unfortunately, has stuck on to the Prime Minister and you can't do anything about it. Talking about uh, names taking, then we have learned, uh, listened to a lot of names like Jersey Gai, Congress Ki Vitviya, Pachas Karod Ki Girlfriend. So there are so many things that can be talked about. So let me strict, completely stay, strictly stay with this issue, saying that when you are not allowed, you are not allowed, meet outside, it's your stadium. That doesn't mean you can go even uh, to, uh, to, to any place, it's in your name. Meet outside. Okay. Come, let's have uh, some decency. Amit Sports, Malviya, just because game. the stadium and is named in the Prime Minister's like name doesn't mean that he can get into the dressing room. There are ICC rules that govern who gets into the dressing room and even family members of the players aren't allowed. Former players like Tendulkar and Dhoni aren't allowed. Well, uh, because we also have an example of Mohammad Azruddin, who was the captain of the Indian team, fairly celebrated, but was accused of match fixing. Um, so clearly these rules were made to keep players out, even if they were uh, captains of the winning World members? Cup team. So <laughs> I don't think there is a parallel there uh, that yeah, can yeah. be drawn. And uh, anybody that making sportsman. that argument is obviously making a political argument and not as a sports person. But having said that, Rahul, the point <laughs> is not about who can get in. The point is whether Rahul Gandhi was justified in reducing himself to a troll and referring to the Prime Minister in an uncharitable manner for something which he is not at all responsible for. Um, that, I think, shows Rahul Gandhi's pettiness, his inability to raise the public discourse, the fact that he supports uh, such superstition, he supports the kind of argument that people would make on the street, he's hardly a leader, he's okay. somebody who can't put two and two together, he can't hold his thought, he's somebody who's full of bloopers, um, and uh, you've had now uh, the Congress spokesperson and somebody who's in the garb of a spokesperson but making all political points on your show, trying to defend what Rahul Gandhi said was right what when it isn't. Is and let me tell you, the eventual proof of this is going to be in the people's court. The what Rajasthan the election guy, and the Telangana outcome will bear this out. And I said this in my Islamic. earlier comment that Sonia Casting Gandhi explosions. called Prime Minister Maud Ka Saudagar and today the Congress is on a deathbed. That is the reality of Congress's politics. You target Prime Minister Modi personally, the people of this country will respond to you. And lastly, of what I saw in the video, the tweets put out by Shami and Jadeja and the others, I think it was a great moment for the Indian national team to have the Prime Minister come and cheer them up. And this is not the first time he's done it, Raul. He's met the Commonwealth champions, he's met the Asian Games uh, champion, and not just those who won medals, the entire contingent. What about the women he's wrestlers? He's met the para-athletics, uh, you know, the entire contingent. So he's been doing it. On purpose, he's been doing it consistently. It wasn't something that he did for the cricket team and hasn't done it for uh, track and field events. So Prime okay. Minister Modi can't be faulted for being consistent. But the opposition can definitely be questioned on their selectivity and, of course, reducing themselves to a troll, like I've been saying repeatedly. Okay, you've been hitting some shots in these debates, Mr. Malvia. Before I end, did you play any cricket yourself? Oh, I mean, you know, everybody plays cricket and I too did and I was fairly good at it. I mean, good enough to play a game even now. Yeah, you claim that. How do we know you were any good? Batting or bowling? Karte the? Well, I was a batsman and I would keep. 
always good spot to be in. Gaurav bhai, are, Gaurav bhai. Oh no, where is he going? Gaurav bhai, can you hear me or not? He just took off his earpiece. Okay, thank you. Kunal, Gaurav bhai. Okay, uh, Kirti Azad sahab, I think we need to set up a match then. Uh, Amit Malviya claiming he's a good batsman, so maybe we can have a government versus opposition cricket match. I think that will be a good one to do. Well, he's called me someone in a garb of, garb of a sportsman. <laughs> Trolling a prime minister. I never said anything about the prime minister. And he gave so many things that he's gone and met so and so many sportsmen. What about the aggrieved women sportspersons, sportswomen, who sat there for months and were not given justice? So, there are so many things I can talk to. I didn't want to make it political, but he says someone in a garb of, garb of a sportsman who was a member of the victorious World Cup team of 1983 shows the mindset that the BJP has towards its sportspersons, either men or women. Okay. So, the government, uh, the party has spoken. You've heard from the opposition whether or not this is a fair attack in election season. We leave to you, our viewers, to decide. But in any case, encouraging superstition, no matter who the person may be and who the target may be, is that appropriate? Think about that. You want to encourage science, you want to encourage forward-looking rational thinking. Do you want to encourage superstitious thinking amongst your citizens, amongst your voters? That is not such a sharp thing uh, to be doing for anyone to do it. I'm slipping into a break. When we come back, will there finally be light at the end of the tunnel? First images of the 41 trap workers emerge. Vertical drilling process begins. Details coming up on the other side. watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics and insights that matter. Join India Today now on WhatsApp with the number one election team as we gear up for the upcoming assembly elections. Scan the QR code now. Join India Today now on WhatsApp. Follow these steps. Open WhatsApp on your phone. Check for a new updates tab. Select Find Channel and type India Today. After finding the channel, tap the Follow button. Joining me at the International Emmy Awards is Ekta Kapoor, who has just received an Emmy Award for her remarkable career and of course a contribution in the Indian tel Indian uh, you know television film industry Ekta many many congratulations Thank you so much I'm honored and elated we have finally brought the Emmys home <laughs> this is for you India this is your Emmy what was that moment when you were walking up that stage and what was your thought process during that time I just knew one thing that I was going to go up on stage. If I look at the monitor, I'll get lost. So I kept the monitor, but I didn't look once also the teleprompter, and I spoke from my heart. And when you spoke, you literally made me also emotional. <laughs> See, we Indians, we had to fight for our place in the sun, and finally we're getting it. So this is for my country. I humanized her on stage because I really feel all Indian women are shades of India. <laughs> you know, uh, Ekta, you have now become the first Indian filmmaker and producer to win an Emmy Award. How does that feel and what does that mean to you personally? It's a huge responsibility. I'm hoping to uh, take it forward in the right way. But uh, at this present moment, I'm overwhelmed. And um, wow. I'm just waiting to take the Emmy home. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations.
make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. I feel like a Jaipur Maharaja. You are my bodyguard. Tiger is alive. Nothing like an early morning walk to get the energy going. Who will become the Chief Minister? 50-50. 50-50, I heard of biscuits. Morning walk done. Time for some Rajasthani breakfast at Tapri. Saffron chai. BJP is very big. I want to leave this thing. I don't want to leave this thing. Enjoy Desi Ghi Bajre Ki Roti. As the narrative of democracy comes full circle in the state of Rajasthan, where the people become the powerful and the powerful at the will of the people. Will history repeat itself or will the people of the state script a new chapter? सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा विकास का है पर आपके यहाँ पे ना रोड है ना कुछ Presented by Aapka Joy, Bharat Ka Joy, Joy E-Bike. After 10 long and arduous days, there seems to be some light emerging at the end of the proverbial tunnel for the 41 workers trapped in Uttarakashi. For the first time in nearly 250 hours, an endoscopic camera captured the 41 labourers. All of them seem relatively okay. Vertical drilling operations have begun. He is hoping that they are out soon. Ashutosh Mishra and Amit Bhardwaj with this ground report. First images of the workers from the inside of Uttarkashi tunnel where they have been trapped for 10 days now. The footage accessed by India Today shows the workers interacting with rescue team members on Tuesday. The breakthrough was made possible after cameras were inserted through a 6-inch pipe that reached the workers' location Monday evening. A radio set was sent inside the tunnel to the workers through the new pipe, but it did not work due to connectivity issues. Rescue teams are sending food and water to the trapped workers through the pipe. The central agencies, uh, the international agencies which are uh, giving inputs, they are working on five different rescue plans, uh, of which three are the uh, top priority plans, right? Uh, one from right uh, 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 in, in the front of the Silkara tunnel. The other other is vertical uh, drilling. Third one is from bar, uh, being uh, done from barcode. All these have its own advantages and disadvantages. And agencies are parallelly working on these plans. A three-way drilling mission is on to get the trapped workers out of the tunnel. While around 450 to 480 meters of horizontal drilling is needed at the barcode end of the tunnel. Around 60 to 70 meters of horizontal drilling is needed at the Selkyara end of the tunnel to reach the workers. Another vertical drilling of 89 meters from the hilltop is also being done to give more option. Behind me, you are seeing the same part. This is the part where you can see the red light. The Geo Survey team is here, which is the same here. And this is the same here. You have to be prepared with this. You have to be prepared with this. You have to be prepared with this borewell. You have to be prepared with this drilling. And you have to be prepared with this. 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 Vertical drilling is the most important part of this. There are different companies and experts who have come from all over. And trying to, you know, uh, pitch in, uh, in in terms of the best and the quickest possible solution, but which is safe for the, uh, you know, the trapped uh, people also. 
The Indian Air Force has airlifted 36 tons of equipment to the accident site to help with the rescue mission. The Prime Minister's office is keeping a close watch on the operations. Uttarakhand CM Pushkar Singh Dhami spoke to PM Narendra Modi on Tuesday morning. Sabi agencies or Sabi engineer, technician, businesses in this work, they have been working on their work and the pipe of the 6-inch pipe has reached it. And now, the food and all kinds of food will be able to reach it for them. निश्चित रूप से ये हम सबको प्रोत्साहित करने वाली है। The rescue teams are pursuing multiple routes to take out the trapped workers. The hope is one of the escape passages will become operational soon. With Amit Bharadwaj and Ashutosh Mishra, Bureau Report, India Today. 41 laborers have been trapped in the Uttar Kashi tunnel for 10 days and counting. Caught in a dark space with no fresh air or natural light can be hugely daunting. But these 41 workers have displayed immense resilience. They've spoken to their family members and have also now finally been served fresh hot food. Here's how they've been surviving. No way out yet. But a slender six-inch pipe strategically threaded through the debris has provided a glimmer of hope. Captured in a semi-circle formation, a gripping 30-second video filmed through a medical endoscopy camera. Approximately a dozen men in helmets engaged in communication with rescue teams outside. The tunnel illuminated with functioning lights. A proverbial ray of hope for their loved ones on the outside. हाँ मैं तो रेगुलर बात कर रहा हूँ जब एक्सीडेंट हुआ है उसी टाइम से मैं पहुँच गया था और पर डे में बातचीत कर रहा हूँ वो भी ठीक है उसके साथ साथ जितने भी स्टाफ हैं अंदर में सभी ठीक हैं सर्विंग हॉट मील्स इंक्लूडिंग राइस एंड लेंटिल्स सेंट टू द ट्रैप्ड मेन अंटिल नाउ द वर्कर्स सस्टेन Oxygen being supplied through a dedicated tube. An intense battle waged on multiple fronts. Navigating fragile terrain and contending with rubble on one side and grappling with emotions on the other. बड़ी सी खुशी और उम्मीद हुई आप लोगों को उनसे बात करके कि वो ठीक हैं। बात करने के बाद बहुत सारी उम्मीद हुई। बताया। उसको बताया कि मैं आपका सोच चल रहा है। नीचे से आपको लोगों को वही पाइप के द्वारा निकाला जाएगा। Rescuers adopting an alternative approach after horizontal drilling vibrations triggered additional debris falls. Teams now constructing an access road to the hilltop from where they'll dig vertically. मेरे पीछे आप जो सतह देख रहे हैं ये वही हिस्सा है जहां आपको लाल झंडा दिखाई दे रहा है जियो सर्वे की टीम है जिसका सामान यहां पर है और यहीं से खुदाई होनी है दरअसल काफी तैयारी नीचे से दिया आपने सबको समतल कर दिया गया है यहीं से बोरवेल होना है यहीं से लगभग इक्यासी मीटर नीचे पाइप भेजी जाएगी ताकि उन मजदूरों तक पहुंचा जा सके वर्टिकल ड्रिलिंग सबसे महत्वपूर्ण परियोजना है ताकि नीचे अगर ऑल्टरनेटिव जो हॉरिजोंटल ड्रिलिंग है उससे काम नहीं चलता है तो कम से कम वर्टिकल ड्रिलिंग के जरिए मजदूरों को बचाया जा सके the rescue teams must dig 338 feet downward to reach the trapped workers, simultaneously pursuing horizontal excavation. Maintaining the morale of the trapped men poses another significant challenge. A comprehensive five-pronged strategy at the Silkyara tunnel. Hope and resilience converge tirelessly pushing towards a resolution. With Ashutosh Mishra and Amit Bharadwaj from Uttarkashi, Bureau Report, India Today. The State of Israel has designated Pakistan's Lashkar-e-Taiba a terrorist organization. Four Israeli citizens were slaughtered in the 2611 Mumbai terror attack that was masterminded by the Lashkar-e-Taiba. But Israel's move is laden with symbolism. It comes at a time when the Jewish state is fighting a war against the Hamas. Will India now reciprocate by banning the Hamas?
the biggest terrorist strike on Indian soil in a quarter century. The wounds of 2611 still fresh as the masterminds live free lives in Pakistan. But now, 15 years after 166 people were killed by 10 Pakistani terrorists, the state of Israel has designated Pakistan's Lashkar-e-Taiba a terrorist organization. Four Israeli citizens, including Rabbi Gabriel Holzberg and his pregnant wife Rivka, were slaughtered on that day in 2008. Their baby son Moshe surviving and going on to become a symbol of hope for both countries. Lashkar-e-Taiba is a deadly and reprehensible terrorist organization responsible for the murder of hundreds of Indian civilians as well as others. Its heinous actions on November 26, 2008 still reverberate in force through all peace-seeking nations and societies, said a statement by the Israeli government. Israel's designation of the Lashkar as a terrorist organization is heavy with symbolism, coming as it does while the Jewish state is embroiled in a historic war against the Hamas in the Gaza Strip. And while Israel's move against the Lashkar isn't at India's prompting, Israel is openly hoping for reciprocation from India. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, I mean, uh, I see on Qatar, one of the biggest problems of Qatar is the fact that Al Jazeera is there for so many 20 odd years poisoning new, more and more generations of Muslims around the world. In their Arabic language, they are really a tool of, of, of poisoning a lot of the problems we, will, we have now and we will see in the future around the world are uh, in, instigated in one way or another by Al Jazeera. So it's a big problem, but you know, now you go to the people who have leverage. Turkey has, you know, they host some leaders so they have some leverage over them. Uh, Qatar is the same. Uh, you know, you do, you do business with the people you can because it's very important to release the hostages. The Indian Prime Minister was among the first to unambiguously describe the Hamas action of October the 7th as an act of terror, something widely appreciated in Israel as it fights a battle of narratives. The question now is, could India return the symbolic gesture, bite the bullet and ban Hamas? Bureau Report, India Today. This is where we wrap up the news track tonight. For your time and your trust, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you 8pm tomorrow evening. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye, good night. watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP group company. A Himalayan rescue effort. 41 trapped since Diwali in 4.5 km tunnel they were building. The passage collapsed about 200 meters from the mouth due to a landslide. Rescuers switched to vertical digging from two sides. When horizontal drilling encountered rocks and debris. The five-pronged strategy involves constructing an access road, horizontal drilling to resume from the entrance once all safety protocols are in place, micro-tunneling plans in progress. On Monday, emergency crews installed a six-inch pipe into the debris. This to feed solid food to the trapped workers and ensure better communication. Till now, they have been receiving food items like nuts, roasted chickpeas and popcorn through a narrow pipe. About 200 disaster relief personnel at the site, with heavy equipment and excavators involved. 
Also on Monday, agencies working on the ground dropped two robots into the tunnel for remote monitoring. An international underground tunneling expert on site overseeing the rescue says it may take from days to weeks to pull the workers outside. I was in New Zealand for Diwali when it began. And so I danced in New Zealand for Diwali. And my understanding is these men would have been dancing for Diwali when they went in for work. I'm confident that they'll be singing Christmas carols for Christmas. What I'm not sure is exactly where between Diwali and Christmas they'll, they'll be joining us back here. That I really don't know. It could be in a few days, it could be in a few weeks, but it will be before Christmas. Vibrations from heavy duty machines, a fragile terrain, pose a daunting challenge. While even midnight, when the temperature goes as low as 4 to 5 degrees, the rescue operation goes under unstoppable. While all over this area, there are maximum efforts being placed in the tunnel. The work goes round the clock, even be it midnight or the early morning. It's mega, massive mission in the mountains. In Uttarkashi, right outside Silkara Tunnel with Mirdula Mashutosh Mishra for India Today. Nothing like an early morning walk to get the energy going. Chief Minister, who will you be? 50-50. 50-50, I listened to the biscuits. Morning walk done. Time for some Rajasthani breakfast at Tapri. Saffron chai. BJP is a big deal. I want to leave this one. I want to leave this one. I want to leave this one. Enjoy Desi Ghi Bajre Ki Roti. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. For more than a month, the country was glued to television screens, tracking Team India's progress in Cricket World Cup. The whole nation rooting for men in blue in one voice. The dream run was shattered on Sunday when the Australians stopped Indian juggernaut at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. Even as millions of cricket fans are heartbroken, an ugly politics has erupted. Congress leader Jairam Ramesh wondered why 1983 World Cup winning captain Kapil Dev wasn't invited to the final. Party MP Manikam Tagore highlighted how India haven't won any ICC event after Narendra Modi came to power. In 2019, we lost the World Cup. 2023, we lost the World Cup. Modi ji is the Prime Minister. This is a fact. What is the problem with the BJP in the fact? Why they are running away for, from the facts? Opposition leaders like Shiv Sena, Sanjay Raut and TMC's Mawa Moitra questioned the BCCI for hosting the final at the Narendra Modi Stadium. Final we have Narendra Modi Stadium. People say that if we are in the Narendra Modi Stadium, we will win. The Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel's name has changed the Narendra Modi Stadium. इसलिए बना दिया कि वहाँ वर्ल्ड कप करना है और वर्ल्ड कप जीतना है और अगर वर्ल्ड कप जीता तो सिर्फ नरेंद्र मोदी स्टेडियम पर जीता है और मोदी जी वहाँ थी इसलिए जीता है यह भारतीय जनता पार्टी का एक बहुत बड़ा पर्दे के पीछे गेम प्लान चल रहा था बीजेपी हैज हिट बैक अक्यूजिंग द कांग्रेस ऑफ पॉलिटिसाइजिंग क्रिकेट 
while cricketers made India proud by reaching the World Cup final, the politics over the team's loss has left a bitter aftertaste. Bureau Report, India Today. Weather forecast now. Delhi, maximum 28 and minimum 15 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 31 and minimum 27 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 31 and minimum 21 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 26 and minimum 20 degrees. Chennai, maximum 28 and minimum 25 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 30 and minimum 20 degrees. As the narrative of democracy comes full circle in the state of Rajasthan, where the people become the powerful and the powerful at the will of the people. Will history repeat itself or will the people of the state script a new chapter? Presented by Aapka Joy, Bharat Ka Joy, Joy e -bike. In politics, everyone has an opinion. But I have the data. Whose stock is rising? Whose graph is falling? Track India's political stock exchange. Unmatched, unmissable data analytics. The only show on News TV where numbers do the talking. India's most credible poll tracker, the Political Stock Exchange, with Rahul Kamal only on India Today. I feel like a Jaipur Maharaja. You are my bodyguard. Tiger is alive. Nothing like an early morning walk to get the energy going. Who will become the Prime Minister? 50-50. 50-50, I heard my biscuits. Morning walk done. Time for some Rajasthani breakfast at Tapri. Enjoy Desi Ghi Bajre Ki Roti. So sorry.
Good evening viewers, let's take a look at the weather report across the major cities this evening. Thiruvananthapuram is at 32 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 146. Mumbai is at 37 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 147. Panji is at 34 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 141. Ahmedabad is at 32 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 203. Bhopal is at 29 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 201. Jaipur is at 27 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 229. Delhi is at 26 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 386. Srinagar is at 13 degrees Celsius with AQI being 165. Lucknow is at 28 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 271. Patna is at 30 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 252. Kolkata is at 30 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 212. Hyderabad is at 29 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 112. Bangalore is at 29 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 93. Chennai is at 29 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 46. This is all we have for you in this segment. Hope wherever you are, you find favorable weather around you. Keep watching India today for all the weather updates with me AI Sana all through the day. You are watching India Today. Powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Presented by JK Tire Ranger Series. Stay wild at heart. Co presented by Star Health Insurance, the health insurance specialist. to this news today special coming to you from Hyderabad where remember the youngest state in the country Telangana